as people will be, will be moving throughout this presentation. At the conclusion, our life team members will be at the doors of the church collecting money for the places in the Holy Land.
station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, Lord Jesus Christ, and we praise you. There he stands, on trial. Jesus' way of life puts him on a collision course with the powerful and mighty of his day. His crime is to call both rich and poor to a conversion of heart and to build a world where all live as brothers and sisters in love and justice. For proclaiming a kingdom not of this world that challenges the order of his day, Jesus has to die. Are you the king of the Jews? It is you who have said so. I order you to tell us under oath whether you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so. I tell you, from this day forth you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. He deserves to die. I find no guilt in this man, and I'm innocent of his blood. See to it yourselves. they know they are terrified of their own. As the soldiers lay the cross on Jesus' shoulders, Jesus lays his hands on the blindness of our sins and begs us. Even if you cannot see the meaning of what God offers you moment by moment, take it up, bear it, so that in the struggle, God can show you just how much he loves you. Hail, King of the Jews! Now pick up that cross, carpenter! Maybe the carpenter king here carved this one out himself. Wouldn't that be funny if he designed his own cross? Do not mock. He is a condemned man. <sighs>
<coughs> Third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, Lord Jesus Christ, and we praise you. <laughs> Weakened by torture and fatigue, Jesus collapses under the cross. He shares our own human frailty and our helplessness as we come face to face with our own human limitations. But just as God lifts up his son in his suffering, so too does he strengthen us when we fall. Falling already? Get up, you have a long way to go. Maybe we shouldn't have whipped him so hard. Get up, weakling. <laughs>
Sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, Lord Jesus Christ, and we praise you. Because I hold the cross to the world. Veronica rises above her fear of public opinion to step forward and gently press her veil to the bleeding and dirty face of Jesus. So he reaches out to the God of heaven, imaged in the face of his son. And Jesus responds to her offer by leaving the impression of his holy face on her cloth. Who's that woman? His lover. Shall we arrest her? She's not his lover. And she shows such courage for a woman. Leave her alone. Thank you. 
ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, Lord Jesus Christ, and we praise you. Jesus knows the end is near. He is so weak he can barely stand. Yet his will is driven on by his infinite love. It is easy for us to identify with Jesus' falls because we understand those moments of defeat. But often, it is only through extreme trial that we recognize in ourselves some God-given strength we never knew we had. Face down on the ground, like Jesus, we remember that God's Spirit is in us, and we choose to be faithful to the end. Fool! Die here and make it easier on yourself. <coughs> How does it feel to be humiliated, King of the Jews? Have pity on me, God, for men trample upon me. Strengthen me to hold out until the end. Not a word, not a word, not a word. 
Jesus willingly extends his arms and accepts the torture of the nails, being crucified like a common criminal. Jesus really lived his teachings about forgiveness. Love your enemies. Pray for your persecutors. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Because of Jesus' forgiving heart, he lets the nails we drive into his hands and feet drive away our guilt and sin. I cannot move. The pain. There's a fire running through me. Oh God. Why have you abandoned me? So, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. You saved others. Why can't you save yourself? King of the Jews, come down now from the cross. For us to see it and believe. I wish this could all be over. Even though it means goodbye. Even though it means our faith in my son's words will finally be put to the test. I should have known something like this would happen. Ever since an angel announced his birth. Ever since he <clears throat> told me that a sword would pierce my heart. Ever since then as Jesus spoke more and more about the kingdom that they now mocked him for. I should have known something like this would happen. And in my heart, I did know. I can't help but think of you as a child. Such a happy one he was. So loving, so obedient, so willing to forget himself to do for others. Now he's a man, and that hasn't changed. Even as he hangs there, in so much pain, I can barely stand to look at him. Yet still, his concern is for others. I'm his mother. Can I do nothing to comfort him? The soldiers won't even let me touch him. Is there no limit to the cruelty people can inflict on each other? And yet, Jesus gave John to me, and me to John, and said, Woman, behold your son, behold your mother. If there is any hope to be had, it is in these final acts of selflessness. One gives his life for the sake of others and gives us into each other's care. God's perfect plan to bring about his kingdom, how can we not say yes? <laughs> Father. 
12th station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, Lord Jesus Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The sky grows dark in mid-afternoon. The ground trembles. Nature is in convulsion. For the Lord of life, the Lord of nature, is in his death agony. As he is dying on the cross, Jesus shares the hopelessness of us all when we see our efforts and dreams collapse. But he dies the way he has lived, with total trust in his Father's love. Out of the defeat of Jesus' death on the cross, we claim the victory of our redemption. Oh God, I'm bleeding. My throat is parched like baked clay. Oh God, I'm thirsty. Oh God, I'm dying. Come on, roll the dice. Father, forgive them, but they know not what they do. Give him something to kill the pain. You're getting soft-headed. You've done this too many times. Maybe. But this was a truly upright man. A leader I would follow anywhere. Many times I've stood beneath this cross and watched men die. I've seen the desperate things men to do to escape so cruel a death. My heart is calloused, and I don't feel much of anything anymore. That is until today. Not everyone who has stood beneath this cross has seen what I saw today. I saw a man ask God to forgive the very men who were putting him to death. I saw a man reach out to a dying thief and give him the promise of paradise. I saw a man care for his sorrowing mother in his hour of great need. I saw just how human he was as he declared his thirst. And I heard him declare that his life his work and his mission are now finished. As I stood beneath this cross, as I saw how Jesus lived and died, as I heard his words of love, I saw the face of the Son of God. Oh, Jesus, please, right here, right now, I commit my life and my destiny into your hands. Forgive me for my part in putting you to death. Give me today the promise of paradise, despite all that I have done. Make me your brother in God's great kingdom. Quench the parching thirst of my soul, in my agony of separation from God. And do your saving work in my life until it is finished. Here, beneath this cross, I have seen the saving love of the Son of God. Bitterness 
he must feel married to have loved him, and yet to watch him die. Perhaps it would have been better if he hadn't spoken out so boldly. <clears throat> he could have done great things without risking his life. My heart is filled with sorrow, but this had to be. He accomplished his mission, and for that, I am glad. to go. The governor's command. We must guard the tomb. <laughs> How I got involved in this, I'll never know. I was on my way into the city, trying to finish business and return home before the Sabbath, when all of a sudden I heard commotion in the streets. Next thing I knew, I was in the middle of a crowd, carrying three poor souls to their deaths by crucifixion. As I tried to escape to the edges of the crowd, a rough hand grabbed my shoulder, spun me around, and I was facing a Roman soldier. He said, here's a fine, strong fellow. Maybe he's a follower of the Jew king here. He'll do to help carry the cross. Before I could even protest, they shoved me under an enormous wooden beam, and I was forced to carry this cross with this man, who I didn't even know. But I couldn't help but notice that he was quite different from the other two, the one whose cross I bore. 
He had a kind of dignity about him. He didn't strike me as a criminal. And on the placard that they were carrying alongside him, it said, King of the Jews. I felt myself drawn to him. I can't explain and I don't know why, but I was. I felt as if he had something he wanted to say to me. He turned and looked at me and spoke, though I could not hear above the noise of the crowd. I figured it out. God loves you. As he said it with those deep eyes of his, I felt a blessing descend upon me, and I was sure who I was, and that there was no place I would rather be than here. And I felt as if all my life had been leaning towards that moment, in his eyes, maybe, towards that simple message that said, God loves you. So I'm standing here, shaken by his message, trying to figure out what I'm going to do, <coughs> what I'm going to tell my wife when I get home. Can I shape my days around that simple message that he said? God loves me, God loves you, and that is the word. <coughs>